So this is the very well-known, very well-liked, very well-respected bloodstock agent, Anthony Bromley. Anthony, as a bloodstock agent, I know it's quite all-encompassing, but in a few words, what is it that you do? So <laughs> I'm, uh, I match up buyers and sellers, basically. Okay. I'm the middleman. Um, I go to horse auctions and can look around for either for trainers, would be my clients, or they could be directly for the owners themselves and I get paid a commission uh, percentage of the price of the horse to do that job. And it isn't all about the auctions because there's obviously private sales going on and trainers certainly have got to train their horses. So the private market is another factor in which what I do as well because that's my job. I'm always looking for horses for sale, be it flat or jumps. And a trainer will come to me and say, I've got a client, he's looking to buy a horse, what's about? And I may not have anything immediately, but I might have something in a few weeks or something and I suggest a horse or whatever. And then we come to the auctions and I'll do a lot of the legwork, get around, look at all the horses. So when the trainer arrives, he's been training his 100 horses in the morning, he just needs to get to the sale and say, look, I, can't, I haven't got time to go and look at 200 horses. Just give me 20 that you think will fit my criteria and my budget. And I'll, and I'll cut it down to a 20 and then they'll go off and look and then they'll cut it down to what they like. And with trainers that I've worked with for quite a long time, you sort of know the sort of horses they're going to like. So you can get that list of 20 pretty tight for them and it'll just be a question about the budgets and things like that, obviously. So you're trying to give them the list that you think's got a chance for their budget. There's no point, it's very easy to put on a whole list of horses which are gonna make a quarter of a million pounds, but if they've only got a budget of 50,000, it's, it's, you know, I've gotta be sensible about it. So you, a, lot of, a lot of it is common sense, knowing what the market is, knowing the price of horses or the value of them. Now, sometimes horses make a lot more than you expect, and sometimes they don't. So you've got to keep... So sometimes you can walk in and a horse makes double what you think, and sometimes you can make half. But if you keep your criteria the same, hopefully you can get some good bargains amongst it. But you've just got to do a wholesale and work it hard, and hard work tends to pay. It, I don't think there's necessarily any genius about That's it That's life in general, isn't it? I think it? <laughs> if you get the homework done and follow, and follow through, then things can happen for you. You say there's no genius to it, but your strike rate of buying really good horses is very impressive, both on the flat and the jumps. Uh, what actually qualifies you to become a bloodstock agent? <laughs> Not a lot, really. I think there's no actual uh, uh, qualification as such. I think it's time and experience, uh, listening and working with some of the best people in the industry as you're learning and to go along. Uh, I work with the top man, and David Minton, and I, when I finished my A-levels, went to work with him as a sort of the T-boy and a run around and you're working with really good, honest, straightforward people and you learn a lot and you listen and you pick it up and uh, it, there's obviously mistakes you make, but you're always learning. Even now, I mean, there's, there's things, I won't do that again sort of thing. There are things you're still learning and the horses are an amazing beast, but they, they live to disappoint as well. <laughs> you know, they, they can do silly things for themselves overnight and, uh, and things like that, but they are a beautiful creature and we love them dearly. But uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's sometimes a head scratcher at times. And I know you're very modest, but just give us a few names of horses that you bought. Well, um, so over the jumps, uh, there'd been sort of horses like Corto Star, uh, Long Run, Masterminded Big Bucks, there'd be some of the top stars that would be known. And then in, in recent times, uh, more recent, the, the, re the latest Grand National winner, Noble Yates, bought him six weeks before the National for the Whaley Cohens. Actually didn't know that. Congratulations. Um, so that was, a, that was a feather in the cap. Uh, was he very was, expensive? He, was, <laughs> he doesn't look it now. This is me. He doesn't look it now. <laughs> he looks cheap now, doesn't he? Yeah. He's won the Grand National. He possibly was possibly on the Saturday morning when he was 50 to 1 for the National, he looked pricey enough. But uh, no, it oh, was... Well um, done. I was given a commission by Robert to find a horse for Sam because this looked like being his last year. Wow. And he didn't really have a horse for the National. He really wanted to have one. And I said, there was, there's this horse that's been laid out for it. And I know Paul Byrne. I've spoken to him. Everything's tick, tick, tick. But wow. are you sitting down? There's a, li there's a reasonable fuck price tag on the horse. Okay. Uh, but we, we, we negotiated a bit and we got a deal done and it's wow. all, you know, and the rest is history as they Gosh, say. Gosh, yeah. But that was, a, that was a nice deal to get Did done. Did you back him? Yeah. Ooh. I did it in February when, <laughs> when he was about 66 to 1. When we did the deal, I was very much more positive about the whole thing than I was probably on the morning of the race. I'd gone a bit sort of cold like everyone else seemed to be on the bookmakers. Because he went at uh, the Grand National Weights. We did it just before the Grand National Weights were announced. And, uh, and he came in that week to about 20s and 25s. 
and I was patting myself on the back for backing him at 60-60s. And then he's drifted back out to 50s just on the kind day. kind of got forgotten about so it, I didn't back he? him again because I thought, well, I've got a little bet on yeah. him, so it was all right. Oh, wow. Gosh. So, yeah, that was the most recent big one. But um, And on the flat? And on the flat, so my earliest uh, big flat when it was Kingsgate native, I bought him at Doncaster for 20,000 at the old complex, actually, and he was a great horse. He, he was a, sp a real special horse, one that the nun thought was a two-year-old, and he ended up going to stud but was infertile and came back and was still winning temple stakes as a nine, ten-year-old and things like that. He, he was a great old boy by, uh, by um, was he by Mujidil, I think. And, um, and then in more recent times, Chipotle for Eve last year, won the Royal Ascot, uh, Windsor Castle, and was, was a fast two-year-old. And then True Shan for Alan King was the champion stayer. Bought him at the Breeze Ups for 31,000. Those will be my two stars on the flat from last season, but uh, yeah.